Hey everyone, welcome to I Need a Weapon Episode 2, the series where you guys request a class and I review it. Stay tuned till the end so that you can hear the theme for the next class of I Need a Weapon. And at the end of the last video, I asked you guys to recommend me a class that is versatile. And Goofish Bluefish here recommended me an M4. He wanted me to use the XRK M4, but because I have the zip tie, which has the exact same front barrel, which is why he wanted me to use the XRK, and really the zip tie is just a black XRK M4, so I decided to go with that. Hopefully that doesn't ruin your class, buddy. I'm sure it doesn't. So Goofish wanted me to use the M4 with FSS 14.5 inch tack light barrel, a Tack laser, a 4.0 times flip hybrid, a commando foregrip, and a forge tack CQS stock. For the secondary, he wanted me to use the 50GS with muzzle brake, 1 milliwatt laser, lightweight trigger, Cronin LP945 mini reflex, hate the name of that thing, uh, the rubberized grip tape, and for perks, cold blooded, ghost, and battle hardened, and for lethal and tactical, thermite and stim. The M4, because of how good it is, is my favorite gun to customize because you can kind of ruin it or make it like really overpowered depending on what attachments you use. And I think that's kind of fun to play around with and some sometimes find a middle specialized role for it. And although it might be overused, it's one of my favorite guns to use. And honestly, weapons like the M4 are always my favorite to use just because I like versatile low recoil assault rifles that can be stretched out to different ranges and be built for different things. I like being versatile and that's all I can say about it. And from the moment I read the name, I knew it would be a little bit unconventional, but I want to see how it would actually play in game. Of course, that's what the series is all about. So he was going for a LVOAC look for the M4 and those are very cool looking rifles. It is a low visibility operation application rifle. It's very cool. Apparently they're loved for recoil control and low visual presence and that's great. I mean, for real life, but how does this work in modern warfare? In modern warfare, this barrel reduces your bullet velocity, but increases your aim down sight speed. And with the Forge Tac CQS and Tac Laser attachments, your aim down sight speed with this thing is pretty goddamn fast. The only attachment we have here for recoil management is the Commando Foregrip, which is pretty good for the M4. You don't need too many things. You don't need to stack like three different recoil control attachments unless you're a madman like myself. But it is interesting how much this weapon is spec'd for ADS speed, but then also has a four times flip hybrid, which I believe slows down your aim down sight speed and is pretty high zoom. And because of this weapon's lack of recoil control and the fact that it has less bullet velocity and it's all focused on ADS speed, just, I don't know, I get that you're maybe going for the versatility side here, maybe you're just going for aesthetics because you nailed the LVOAC look, but I, I will say, I would have gone with the normal integral hybrid, maybe the canted, but for how you have this weapon set up, a red dot or hollow would have worked just fine. Challenging moving enemies at mid to long range with this kind of felt like a chore, and that's fine, you clearly wanted it to be more for mid-range, but the whole idea was to be versatile. And the M4 is versatile enough, and you kind of reduced some of its versatility here. And the tack laser is good for aiming stability and aim down sight speed and all, but there's a, there's a problem with it. I can't pre-aim a corner, and I don't want to have to go into ADS if somebody comes around a corner. I see people doing it, and yeah, with some success, but it's dumb to me that I have to add another step in my order of operations when somebody is about to come around a corner. Because instead of keeping my sight on the door and keeping my feet moving and everything, I have to worry about when they come to the door, ADS, then shoot. And that sucks. I want to pre-aim a doorway and I have to always be careful of where my laser is and if it's in front of the door, if it can be seen from a different angle. And I kill people because I see their laser constantly. I see the laser beaming past me or in front of me or I see it beaming out of a window into a different window and I just throw a goddamn grenade in. So the TAC laser is good for a very, 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 very aggressive build, but when you have the Forge TAC CQS stock and the 14.5 inch TAC light barrel, I really don't see the point in more aim down sight speed. This could have been used for a suppressor so I could be a little bit more stealthy. You could have done a larger magazine. I hate running out of ammo and this thing burns through ammo pretty quickly, especially if I'm at mid range or if I need to suppress somebody or pre-fire a corner, I run, I run out of ammo way too soon. Um, literally any other attachment I think would have been better than the tack laser for this. But again, if you're just going for aim down sight speed, then okay, it's not really versatile and it kind of limits me and I felt very limited while using this setup. Don't misunderstand me and think that I'm saying this was hard to use. It wasn't really hard to use, but it was confusing to use because 
I could aim down sight really quickly, but you had a sight that slows down your aim down sight time and is for longer range engagements that this thing really can't do unless you're mounted, but you probably could have done if you would have had a compensator or a muzzle brake instead of attack laser. Honestly, rubberized grip would have been nice. So your M4 is not very versatile, but what about your secondary here? We have the 50GS, muzzle brake, laser sight, lightweight trigger, reflex sight, rubberized grip tape, pretty damn good. Now, I don't think it needed the muzzle brake. I think a longer barrel would have been good. I also think a compensator is a bit better, or I actually personally, I like monolithic suppressor on it, but that's just me. Also, I personally don't recommend using the laser sight on the 50 cal because I don't think it's necessary. You should be going for precision with the Deagle and pacing your shots and going for headshots. So I, I really don't see the point in ever hip firing the Deagle. Of course, it could come in handy in a pinch, but something that just becomes a lot more handy is having 13 rounds of ammunition or a longer barrel or a suppressor. I would have felt more versatile and I would have felt a little bit better with those, but I am happy to say the damn thing works. Deagle with lightweight trigger and rubberized grip just feels great. And muzzle brake helped, I think, a little bit. Uh, the reflex felt good. Not a bad Deagle. I could nitpick it, but this is a working Deagle, and I'm gonna say good job with it. But a suppressor is really good if you get behind enemy lines and you want to shoot somebody. The Deagle, of course, can one-shot headshot, so being able to stealthily take out somebody with a single shot if you come, you know, come up on a camper and don't want everyone to know your position. But let's just talk about your perks here. Now, cold-blooded is not something I normally run on a class. And the reason I don't run it on a class is because I switch to it mid-game generally. Cold-blooded is my oh shit perk. Cold-blooded is the perk that I use when there's a lot of enemy streaks in the air, or at least one that's over my spawn, and I need to shoot it down. I usually have a class that's built for shooting down streaks that has cold-blooded always on it, and I can just switch that class, spawn in with an FMJ LMG, and shoot down just about 90% of the streaks in the game. Literally any other tier one perk would have been a bit better, but this class doesn't have a lot of survivability, mostly due to that green laser being way more for aggressive players and not people that are trying to go on streaks and not die. And also the fact that this thing is built entirely for aggressive play. I just don't know why I want cold-blooded. Wouldn't I rather have quick fix or double time or EOD? I, I really don't see the purpose of using cold-blooded on this class. And when it comes to ghost as your tier two perk, nothing wrong with that, but you have zero suppressed weapons. So it's cool that I won't be on the enemy UAV, but it's bad that when I fire my guns, both of my guns, either one of them, my guns, yeah, I'm gonna be on the UAV. So usually I would just say Ghost is good, whatever, but it does confuse me as to what this class is for because Cold-Blooded is sort of an anti-streak build and Ghost is more of a stealth build and neither of these weapons are stealthy at all. The M4 isn't really even versatile. So I'm a little confused about this one. Next here, uh, Battle Hardened. Battle Hardened helps a bit when you're getting concussioned and stunned, but what I don't understand, th this is what really confuses me. If we were going for stealth perks, why not use Tracker or uh, Tune Up? Something along those lines. That way I could, you know, get Dead Silence faster, something like that. You want me to be sort of resistant to flashes, stuns, and EMPs, but you don't want me to be resistant to explosives. I see how it is. You want me to die a lot. I get it. And then Thermite and Stim, I'm gonna give you a full 10 out of 10 for Thermite and Stim. Not the whole class, a 10 out of 10, but that selection, I can't complain with. Stim is great for aggressive play, and Thermite is also great for aggressive play, and anti-streak play, and area denial. Just a good fucking piece of equipment there. And really, what I love about this class is that it does feel very fast and snappy. I like that I have a very lightweight feeling M4, I like that I have Thermite and Stim. Your perks, however, this is what I start to hate about the class, frankly. Uh, the perks counterdict your attachment setup, and your attachment setups confuse the hell out of me anyway. So I'm just confused here. You could have built this M4 for accuracy and speed. You could have balanced that out. You could have built the Deagle to be a powerful backup that maybe fills a role that the M4 itself doesn't like doing more of a stealth build on it, for instance. And that would have been great. So there's a lot of contradiction going on here. I constantly wished I had different perks. I constantly wish I had different attachments. And that's why your class is only going to get a four out of 10. You nailed the feeling of being speedy and then having a pretty reliable hand cannon as a secondary. I like that. I like that you can do that with the M4, but versatile, uh, no. 
It's not versatile. In fact, this class to me is limiting, but more so than being limiting, it's counterdicting. So I'm sorry for the four out of 10. I wish I could give you something higher. I, I wish I could give you a nice five out of 10, but I'm sorry, the attachment setups keep that from you. I'll be honest, if you would have given me extended mags and a suppressor on the Deagle, and if you would have given me pretty much any other attachment but the TAC laser, other than any other laser, because I don't think it needs it, I would have probably given this a five out of 10, maybe a six out of 10, depending on my experience with it. But again, I constantly felt limited, and for that reason, I'm sorry. But here's something I'm not sorry about, giving you guys your next challenge for the next episode of I Need a Weapon. I want you guys to recommend me a class that's amazing, not just good, amazing, at killing campers. So, make sure you give me your best counter camper classes. I want perks, field upgrades, lethals, tacticals, secondary, primary, just build it for debunking campers out of their positions. Please, for the love of God, I would love to review a great class. I'm gonna pick the one that I think looks the best on paper. I'm going to pick it, and once I've picked it, I will test it out, and that is the one I'm doing, even if I don't like, if I even if I end up not liking it, I'm still gonna review it. But I'm gonna pick one based in random. Make sure you upload the ones you would rather me use so that I can see what you guys are looking for, and make sure to, uh, watch to the end of I Need a Weapon, or at least skip to the end so you know what kind of class to leave me for next time. Don't forget to fill every slot on the class, and I will see you when I see you. Goodbye.